Hold you in the heat of the cl- 
glowing embers Let the world stand still The church bells ring Silent night as the angels sing Hallelujah, hallelujah Let the magic warn the moonlit air Hear the choir join in singing Christmas, everybody. The music we have enjoyed represents months of work, and I know that you'll want to join me in thanking our musicians and videographers and all those who have labored to put this together. Now let's start with a grand procession and a gala Eucharist as we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Once again, Merry Christmas.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Yay! A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken is on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, 
Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall go continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem from us all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to begin this Christmas sermon with a Christmas story, although this one didn't happen in church or under a star, even a cold winter's night. In fact, this story didn't even happen in December, and I'll explain. A few years back, a journalist at the Washington Post uh, conducted an unusual experiment. He asked his best friend, who was also a world-renowned violinist, to play a free concert in a subway station, which was intriguing enough, but with a catch. No one would know. Instead, one of the world's greatest musicians would play the world's greatest music on one of the world's rarest instruments just to see if anyone would stop and listen. And for 40 minutes he played, including a passionate performance of Bach Chacon, said to be one of the most difficult pieces to master and a celebration of sheer human possibility. Want to guess how many listened? No one. Nobody listened. To be precise, for 40 minutes the violinist played, 1,097 people hurried by. Seven people did stop, but for less than a minute, and a few guilty passers-by left $39 in loose change. I call this a Christmas story because Christmas is a little like this. Oh, there's the Christmas we know. That Christmas is not like this. We all know this Christmas. This Christmas gets all the attention. This is the Christmas we plan and the Christmas we buy, the Christmas that gets bigger and bigger every year. No, this Christmas grabs our calendars. And this is also the Christmas, quite frankly, we need this year of all years. I had a hunch we would all be hungry for Christmas this year, so it was no surprise to see Christmas lights going up in November or Christmas trees even brought home after the Thanksgiving dishes were washed. Speaking of Christmas trees, I'm told there was a national shortage of those this year as folks rushed to find some comfort or some continuity or just a little beauty in a year with too little of that. 
No, that's not the Christmas I'm thinking about. Rather, the Christmas I'm thinking about is the story we read tonight, the time that love came down, quiet story of the baby on a bed of straw while the world hurried by. In my Sunday school class a few days ago, I mentioned that this story gets lost sometimes, in sentiment to be sure, but also in translation. For those of us who have raised children or remember being children at Christmas time, we remember those pageants we had year after year where the little ones graduate from farm animals up to shepherds or angels or kings, stuffed with speaking roles. Someone always got to play the innkeeper, which was a good one because it only had two lines, no room, no room. But if we look at the story in the original language, which was Greek, we can see something very different from pageants of Christmas past. You see, the word that we translate in doesn't mean hotel or lodging. Rather, it means the guest room of a house. And since Joseph and Mary would travel far from Nazareth to pay taxes in Joseph's own home and among Joseph's own kin, this means that they would know the same rejection the baby would know in time again and again. Let me see if I could say this a little more plainly. They didn't want Mary in the house. She had to have her baby out back with the animals. And so love would come down and God would be born among animals because there was no room in the house, which is to say that the music of heaven was playing, just that nobody was listening. And if Christmas is like this, so is life. If God asks anything of us at all, God asks us to live like Jesus, which is to say a life of forgiveness and understanding and empathy and patience. And if we try, it won't take us long for us to learn that few ever listen to that kind of music. You can count on it. If we love God and we love others this way, we will be ignored. We will be dismissed. We will be thought of as weak or foolish or unrealistic or hopeless romantics in a world that would prefer to count the score. So while it's true that the world hurries by when it comes to Christmas, we can also say this. If we try to live it, we too will find a new treasure. We will be free. A couple of weeks ago, I had the great honor of attending a funeral in Lynn Park, conducted by our own clergy, Mark Ligori. So proud of him. Homeless woman had died in the cold. And Mark, along with other city clergy, including our own bishop, stood for her. And amid construction noise and sirens and the honking horns of a busy downtown, they said the words that we all deserve said, said over us or read at our funeral, which is to say that they honored her as a human being. And among the crowd, which included her extended family and then good citizens of Birmingham who were heartbroken over the news, were others. These were the people who lived there. Did you catch that? These were the people who lived there on the streets of our city, people who sleep on benches and search trash cans for food and wrap themselves in scraps on cold nights. And I like to say that bishops are nice and clergy are nice, Good citizens are nice, but on this day, they stood for her, her neighbors, her friends, honoring her life, standing and praying, and for a few minutes at least, no one in Lynn Park was truly invisible. And this too is a Christmas story, for if Christmas means anything, it means that we matter. We all we all matter, our lives and our choices and our hopes and our dreams, these are precious simply because they are. Christmas means that God knows our deepest selves, the selves we keep the world from seeing and the selves we keep ourselves from seeing. Christmas is a time to be honest, time to come clean. We are God's treasure. We have the story to remind us. For on this night love came down and God was born among animals because there was no room in the house and the world hurried by. But love came down, and the baby would grow. Love came down, and he would grow, and he would laugh, and he would cry, and he would make friends. Love came down, and he would teach, and he would heal. And in time, on on the darkest of days, in time, on the darkest of days, he would die while the world would hurry by again, because that's what the world always does. But love came down. And after three days, the story would change. 
After three days, he would rise again to save us from death. Yes, but save us from our fear that we are unnoticed or unloved. Save us from our fear that our best efforts don't matter. Save us from our fear that we'll never change. Can you see it now? He came to save us from ourselves. He came to save us for something better. Love came down, and this baby has a name. His name is Jesus. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let us continue now as we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Kay, our governor, and the mayors of all the cities in the greater Birmingham area, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Key, our bishop, Glenda, our bishop coadjutor, Marty, our archdeacon, Rich, Rebecca, Mark, Katie, and Rusty, our clergy, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and His church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for Your mercy is great. We thank You, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt You, O God, our King, and praise Your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in Your eternal kingdom. Lord, let Your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in You. We pray to You also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, but above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.